In this video, I'm gonna show you five different ways of how to deal with a single, isolated, standalone cross stitch. Hi there, I'm Sarah with The Notorious Needle and I'm all about empowering you to break the rules of conventional cross stitch so you can make whatever you want. We often see cross stitch tutorials that show you how to stitch a few stitches in a row. Usually, that's what we see in our patterns. But sometimes you come along one lonely cross stitch that either has no other stitches of the same color around or it's all by itself on the fabric. We see these when we stitch things like stars, snowflakes, and sometimes even tiny, teeny little flowers. This is also known as confetti stitches because they drop or out of the sky like random confetti. But how do you anchor your thread starting and stopping a single cross stitch? I'm gonna show you five different ways. Let's get started. Okay, the first method I'm going to show you is traveling. I have some pre-stitched samples here. This is, I believe this is 28 count linen, might be 30 count. And up here, I've traveled a few stitches. And all that means is that you drag the thread across the back. And this is what it looks like. I actually don't recommend traveling on uh, linen because when you back it, and most backings are white, you can see right through the fabric. Um, but here, I've got some traveled stitches on Ada cloth and it's much harder to see. So traveling works best if your uh, thread is light in color and it works especially well if the fabric that you're stitching on is dark. So I'm gonna take this scrap of Ada cloth and I'm going to stitch a few traveled stitches here. I've got a loop start on the back. It just means that I folded my thread in half so that when I pull it through the fabric, there's, it forms a loop on the end. I'm gonna drag my thread over a little bit and stitch over here. And I'll stitch one more up here. And that's it, my thread has traveled. Now that I've traveled, how do I end my thread? There's a couple of different ways this can go. You can do a pin stitch, which is what I've done here. You can see just a little bit. You can see the thread barely peeking out right there. It's anchored quite well and once I stitch over that, you won't be able to see it anymore. I'm going to secure this thread with a pin stitch. I'm going to put it right here in this square next to the square that I just stitched. You can see on Ada cloth that on the front, every other square has horizontal fibers and the squares in between that have vertical fibers. When you do the pin stitch, you wanna get in between the horizontal and the vertical fibers. So you're right in the middle. So first I'm gonna come up through the back and you can do the pin stitch without flipping your fabric over. You just have to find it with the tip of the needle. It can be a little bit tricky with a tapestry needle, which is what I'm using, uh, cause it has a blunt tip. Okay, you can see that I've come between the two horizontal fibers of the Ada cloth in the front. And I'm just gonna flip over and show you that I've also come between the two vertical fibers in the back. So I'm directly in the center of this fabric square. I'm going to come up. Now, since the fibers in the front are horizontal, I'm going to do a horizontal pin stitch. So I'm going to take my needle to the left and poke it through there. Then I will come back up the middle take my needle through 
and to the right. And that is the pin stitch. I'm gonna come back up through the middle. And I'm going to clip, I'm going to cut this tail very, very close. That is a horizontal pin stitch. And over here you can see the vertical pin stitch. Now, the pin stitch doesn't work that well on linen, so I don't recommend it, only for Ada cloth. And it's great if you've got a single stitch, um, but you're going to stitch next to it with another color. So you don't wanna see this if you've got an isolated standalone cross stitch that doesn't have any other colors around it. This works well if you've got another color that's going to be stitched next to this one. Another benefit of the pin stitch is that you can do it only from the front. You don't have to flip your fabric over. If you can find the middle of the fabric square on the Ada cloth, you do not need to flip it over. So this works well if you're stitching on um, a floor stand or a lap stand of some kind. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to stitch a single isolated cross stitch uh, by securing the thread inside the fabric. Now again, this only works on Ada. It won't really work on linen um, because you'll be able to see the tail from the front. But if I flip this over, you can see that I've secured the thread by weaving the front tail and the back tail through the Ada fabric. Now this is a gentle hold. It probably won't work if this project is going to be worn in any way, like on a t-shirt, um, or it's gonna be under distress like if you stitch on a backpack or something. But for a project that is decorative only and will probably be hung up on a wall, this will work great. And also, if this is a confetti stitch, but there are other cross stitches that are gonna be stitched around it, this will work great for anything. Let me show you how I did this. So first, I'm going to flip my fabric over because I don't want the tail to be shown from the back. And then, and then I'm going to push my needle under those fibers that I was telling you about earlier from the back. And I'm going to gently pull until I reach the end of the tail. Oops, I've got some scrap floss there. End of the tail. And I'm going to put my needle through so I can start stitching. Now I'm going to stitch my cross stitch. Then I'm going to flip my fabric over and I'm going to weave the tail under a couple of more fibers. I can do this in any direction I want. I'm just gonna, let's see, I'm gonna go to the left so it'll look similar to the example I showed you. And trim my floss. Now again, this works better if your floss is light in color or if your fabric is dark in color. Because if I put something white behind this, you can see that the floss slightly peeks through. If you don't mind that, this will work great for you. Um, and again, if this stitch is surrounded by other stitches, you won't see this at all. The fourth thing I'm going to show you is using an away knot. An away knot is a form of temporary knot. You carry the thread away and then you tie the knot. Here I have an example of a way knot. Let me hold it this way, it's a little bit easier for me. I've got a cross stitch here. I've got several stitches next to it that I left the tail loose um, so you could see it better on the back. And then I've got my away knot right here with the tail dangling out. If I flip it over, this is what it looks like from the back. 
Here's my original cross stitch. And then here's the stitches I stitched over the thread that I dragged for the away knot. To finish the away knot, all I need to do is snip the knot from the front of the fabric. Scratch it back here and it comes out from the front. And now my thread is secure under these other stitches. This also works well on linen when you've got other stitches that are going to be stitched next to your isolated stitch. So here's my isolated blue stitch. I've stitched a few red ones next to it. And then here's my away knot. All I have left to do is to clip the knot. That's it. And now my thread is secure under the stitches next to it of a different color. Here's what it looks like from the back on linen. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the away knot on linen. I'm gonna start my stitch with the loop start, which is just the, my strand of thread folded in half so that when I pull it through the fabric, it forms a loop and immediately secures my first half stitch. And then I'm going to complete my cross stitch like normal. Now I'm going to drag the thread across the back uh, to about here, pull it through to the front, and I'm going to tie a little knot. This will keep the tail of the thread from slipping to the back. And I'm going to trim the tail. Then I stitch the few stitches that go next to my single confetti stitch. I'm just going to bring my floss to the front so that you can see what it looks like better on the back. So my original stitch is anchored and I can clip off this tail really close to the fabric so that the end of the tail slips behind. And my original cross stitch is secure. Notice that I did not have to flip my fabric over to do that, but here's what it looks like on the back. Now, just like with the confetti stitches, when you're forming your away knot, you don't want to pull too tight so that it puckers the fabric. You want to make sure that your fabric is flat. Um, that if you have your fabric in a frame or in a hoop, that helps. Or if you're holding in hand, just with practice, you want to maintain the right tension. The last way I'm going to show you how to handle a single cross stitch is to just bury the tail twice around the stitches that you formed in the back. This is great for a standalone stitch that doesn't have any other cross stitch around it. It's all by itself like these confetti stitches and it works for linen. I showed you before where traveling works on Ada better um, and you end with a pin stitch. You can't really end with a pin stitch on linen because the thread will not slip in between the fibers. There's too much room in between each of the fibers of the fabric, but this will work. Just bury the thread twice. It works best with the loop start if you've got an even number of threads. And you do have to flip this over. So if you're stitching in a frame and you don't wanna flip your fabric over, this probably isn't the best method. But if you're stitching in a hoop or in hand, this works great. Now, because I've done the loop start, you can see I've got two stitches showing here in the back. Let me pull this a little tighter so you can see it better. There we go. I've got a vertical stitch and a horizontal stitch. I'm going to bury my thread to the side here. Then I'm going to bury it here. Put my needle under that stitch. Then I'm just going to do it again.
then I can snip my foss really close. And then I've got the one standalone stitch. Here's what it looks like on the back. Now this does form a bit of a raised surface. You can see that it sticks up a bit from the fabric. So if it's important to you that your fabric lays very flat, this may also not be the best method. It's almost like tying a knot, but it's not really a knot. If this is sticking out too far, you can bury it un once under each. I bury it twice because I often stitch on things that are going to get thoroughly used, shall I say, <laughs> or even thrown through the wash. This won't come out in the wash. Learning how to stitch a standalone isolated cross stitch will help you expand the portfolio of patterns available to you to stitch. But another way to get around these stitches is to avoid them altogether. Sometimes in a pattern, you'll see fading or shading where you might have a few confetti stitches here and there. And it may not affect the overall aesthetic of your project if you just skip them. Now, if it's hard to keep track of which of these will work best with what type of fabric or what type of pattern, I've got a little download here for you to help you remember. Um, you don't have to give me your email or anything. Just click on the link below and the download will pop up and you'll be able to keep it. Also included in the download is a link to the tutorial, which will have this video in it in case you ever get lost or you need to see an example of the stitches made. Stitch on!